Welcome to this video on addition using different base systems of numbers. So in some of our previous videos, we've introduced the topic of binary numbers, of octal numbers, and hexadecimal numbers. And in this video, we're going to look at how we can perform addition in those base systems. So adding two octal numbers together, or adding two hexadecimal numbers together, and adding two binary numbers together. Before we do that, I want to talk very briefly about how we add ordinary decimal numbers together with a quick example. And the reason behind that is not to be uh, patronising, I'm sure you all know how to add two numbers together, but we're going to look at the particular method of how we go about doing that because it's, it's going to be important when we look at other systems of numbers as well. So let's say we have uh, the addition 86 plus 57. And we're going to lay this out in the manner shown. We're going to say 86 plus 57. And we're going to find our result below. So when we're adding, we're starting with the uh, least significant digits on the right-hand side. So the right-hand side column, we're going to add 6 plus 7. And 6 plus 7 gives us 13. When we previously talked about different number systems, including the decimal system of numbers like we have here, we said that there's only certain permissible digits, and in the decimal system of numbers, the only permissible digits are 0 to 9. So our result of 13 doesn't go. We're only allowed uh, a decimal of 0 to 9 to go here. And so what we have to do is we have to carry a number to the next column. Because we're dealing with decimal numbers, which are to the base of 10, we can carry our 10s from our result to the next column. So if we have 13, we can carry 10, leaving only 3 behind. So let's do that here. We can say that we have a result of 3 here. And we're going to carry 10, but because it's to the base of 10, we put 1 in the next column. This is because our numbers are to the base of 10. So 10 in this column corresponds with 1 in this column because this column is raised to a higher power of 10 than this column. We saw this in a previous video. So at this stage, we've added together 6 and 7 to get 13. We've retained the 3, but we've carried the 1. And in our next column now, we have 5 plus 8 plus the 1 that we've carried as well. And so that's going to give us an answer of 14. And again, we can enter the 4 here, but we have to carry the 1 to the next column. Finally, we have a column now that only contains 1. And so our last um, digit in our result is going to be 1. So 86 plus 57 gives us a result of 143. Now, I'm sure you're all capable of adding 86 and 57 to find 143. But the important point here was the carrying of this number. And the number that's carried is dictated by the base. And so because our decimal numbers are to the base of 10, we are carrying 10s to the next column. And we're going to see why that's important when we look at different number systems in the next section here. Let's suppose now that we want to add two octal numbers together. So I'll just make a note at the top here. And we are adding 4, 3 to the base of 8, plus 5, 6 to the base of 8. So I'm not calling these 43 and 56, because these numbers don't represent the numbers 43 and 56, as we're familiar with them in decimal terms. Um, go back and watch our video on octal numbers if you're not sure. But we have, we have these two octal numbers, 4, 3 and 5, 6. And we've given them a little subscript 8 for each of them, just to remind ourselves that we're dealing with octal numbers here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set this up in exactly the same way. We're going to say 4, 3 plus 5, 6. And our result is going to appear below. So... Using the same method as we looked at previously, um, we're going to add our right-hand column, our least significant digits, 3 
and 6, and 3 plus 6 gives us 9. Now, the temptation here is to say, well, we don't have anything to carry because it's just 9. We can just put 9 in the column uh, in the result below, and that's a bad thing to do. And the reason for that is because remember that we're in the octal system of numbers, and the octal system of numbers only permits 8 digits, and those digits are 0 through to 7. And so 9 is not a permissible digit, so I'm going to get rid of that. So what can we do? Well, remember, in the previous example with our decimal numbers, if we had a number that was too big, we had to carry, and the, the, the amount that we carried was the base of our number, or dictated by the base of our number. So in the decimal system of numbers, we carry tens. But in the octal system of numbers, we're going to carry eights, because we're to the base of eight. So here we got a result of nine, but we're not allowed to put nine we're going to carry 8, and if we carry 8, that leaves us with 1. Another mistake that is common to make is to say, well, we've carried 8, so we're going to put 8 up here. But again, that's not right, because remember when we carried the 10 in the previous example, it corresponded with 1 in the next column. And it's again the same here, because we're in the base of 8, carrying one lot of 8, as you can think of it as being, then we're just going to get 1 in the next column. So we can think of that as one lot of 8. So our second column now, we have 4 plus 5, not uh, forgetting to add that 1 that we've carried as well. So 4 plus 5 plus 1 gives us 10. Again, 10 is not a permissible digit. So we have to carry, and we're going to carry one lot of 8 again. That's going to leave us with 2, with 1 carried to the next column. And so finally, in the last column, we only have 1, and so that's going to give us 1 in the result. So 43 to the base of 8 plus 56 to the base of 8, or 4, 3 plus 5, 6, I should say, gives us 1, 2, 1 to the base of 8. Let's look at a binary example now, and let's say that we are going to add the number 1011 to the base of 2, it's a binary number, to the number 1111. And before we begin, let's remind ourselves that binary numbers, because they're to the base of 2, they only have two permissible digits, and they are 0 or 1. They're the only digits that are allowed. So let's begin by uh, looking at the right-hand column, the first column. And we see that we have 1 plus 1, which would give us 2. So straight away, 2 is not a permissible digit. And so we have to carry the equivalent of our base to the next column. So remember that our base is 2. And we're going to carry 2 to the next column. But our next column, we're only going to enter that as 1. One lot of the base, as it were. One lot of 2 in this instance. So that 2, when it's carried, is only represented by a 1 in our next column. And because 1 plus 1 was 2, but we've carried that, we're left with 0 in our first digit. Next column, we have 1 plus 1 plus another 1 that we've carried. And that's going to give us 3. So again, 3 is not permitted. We have to carry one lot of the base, or one lot of 2. And so once we've carried that, we're only left with 1. We started out with 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, but we've carried 2's worth of that. So we're only left with 1, and we've carried one lot of the base, as it were, one lot of 2, to the next column. Next up we have 1 plus 0 plus 1 which is 2, so again, we have to carry that straight away, which leaves no remainder. And finally, we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. We carry one lot of the 2 to the next column, but we're left with a remainder of 1 when we do so. And the final column here, we've, we've added an extra column in, which now only contains this 1, but that's going to add to give us 1. 
So our result of 1011 plus 1111 gives us 11010. And that's a binary number to the base of 2. The last example of this video is going to be adding two hexadecimal numbers together. And if you're not familiar with hexadecimal numbers, I suggest going back to our previous video where we talked about hexadecimal numbers. Um, but here we have two hexadecimal numbers that we're going to add together, and they are BD2 plus 4AC. And so just as a quick reminder in the top right again, the hexadecimal system of numbers is to the base of 16. And so there's only 16 possible digits, and they are 0 through to F. And 0 through to F corresponding with 0 to 15 in, in the decimal equivalent. Um, again, if, if you're not sure about those digits or where they come from, it's worth going back to our previous video where we talk about hexadecimal numbers in a bit more detail. But anyway, um, back to this example here. We start, same as always, on the right-hand side. We're going to add 2 plus C. Well, remember the letter C in, in hexadecimal corresponds with the number 12 in the decimal world. So really we're saying 2 plus 12. 2 plus 12 gives us 14. We're not going to write 14 here, although we can, providing that we convert it to its hexadecimal equivalent. And so the letter four, the, the, sorry, the number 14 corresponds with the letter E in hexadecimal. And so we can enter E as our first term there. Let's move on to the next column because we have D plus A. So D corresponds with 13. A corresponds with 10. And so when we say D plus A, our result is going to be 23. Now, the number 23 is not permissible here, even in a hexadecimal form, because we're only allowed uh, 0 through to 15 or 0 through to F. And so what we're going to have to do, even though we've got... I'll just make a little note at the side. Um, in fact, it's probably worth doing that anyway. Uh, what did we say? We said D plus A, and that corresponds with 13 plus 10, and that gives us 23. Um, so all we're going to do is, just like in our previous examples, we're going to look at the base of the number and we're going to carry the base um, to, the next, uh, to the next column. So we have 23, which is too big to be a permissible digit. And so what we're going to do is carry the base of 16. And so when we uh, remove 16, let's just make a little note here, 23 minus 16, we're going to be left with 7, and that is a permissible digit. So we'll put the 7 in there. We've carried the base of 16, um, but again, remember, that's only going to be represented by a 1 in the next column because our next column is raised to a greater power of 16. You can see our full hexadecimal number video um, for a bit more detail. But we're just going to put 1 in. We've carried one lot of 16, as it were. And so our last column here is now 1 plus b plus 4, and that's going to give us the equivalent. I'll make a little note here again. Uh, we'll say 1 plus b plus 4. Well, b, remember, is the equivalent uh, in decimal form, um, is the equivalent 11. So we have 1 plus 11 plus 4, and that gives us 16. Now, the temptation here is to think that we can write 16 because we're in the base of 16. 16 is permissible. But remember, 16 possible digits gives us 0 to 15. Um, 16 is not included. And so we have to carry that 16 to the next column again. And that's going to leave us nothing left over because we only had 16 and we're carrying it. So we're going to be left with 0 here. And we're going to carry to a new column 1 lot of the base as it were and one just by itself is going to give us one and so what we're left with when we perform that addition bd2 plus 4ac we have 107e and that's a hexadecimal number 
So I'll write that to the base of 16 there. So I hope you found this video useful on looking at the different number systems and how we can add them together. The same process is used for each of them, but just remembering the base of the number when carrying numbers to the next column in each instance. In our next video, we're also going to look at how we can subtract numbers in different base systems as well.